Today, Prophetic Archive, stop your childish behavior. Let's start with a question to you. Who from among you will get lost? None. You know why you won't go astray? Because when you recognize that you're clumsy, no matter how clumsy you are, in Him, you won't get lost. Do you know why things went wrong? Because you did it your way. You got lost. But you know why you got lost? Because you did it the way you wanted. Because you didn't value the Father in your life. Because we are clumsy. But if that clumsy one had at least depended on the Father, he wouldn't have gotten lost. Neither would have I. Let's read for today's topic on 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1. And it says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. So, let me ask you another question. What are carnal people in church considered to be? The carnal people who have been in the church are children in Christ. Who am I dealing with here in this ministry? With children in Christ. Let's keep reading. Again, so brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food liquid stuff. You know what that means? That you weren't ready to get pieces of sweet potato or yam because you could have drawn. So, as a ministry, we have to give you something tender, simple. Why? Because of what Apostle Paul is writing here. Let's keep reading. For you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You all st are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? If you're still seeing gossip, strife, then there's still carnality in you, then I want you to tell yourself, what are you? What am I? Besides being a carnal, what are you? You're a child. You're a little boy. What are you? You're a little girl. What are you, little girl? Because you're carnal, because if in you there's jealousy, strife, dissension, which means divisions, you tell me, I tell you, each pulling for each side, then what are you? A child. Because if there's carnality in you, what does the Bible say you are? An infant. And what's today's topic? Stop your childish behavior. If in your environment, in your relationships, with your friends, with your significant other, in your social circle, in your family, you're still seeing strife, arguing jealousy, then there's carnality. And if there's carnality, it's because you're a child. Again, brothers and sisters, I cannot address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there's jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? Ordinary people. In other words, allowing yourself to be carried away by time, by occasions, people who live more based on what they feel than what they know. In the introduction here for this topic, let's read what John 7, 38 says. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. The great thing about this is that if I believe in God and rivers flow from me, meaning that there is an influence of truth, then many of you will think, well, 
If a river is supposed to run in me, it seems that that river is very dry. Why? Because we just read in John 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. When the Holy Spirit dwells in a person, that person never lacks truth. When I see block people who never have a way out or solutions in their life, it is because carnality doesn't allow them to listen to that river that flows, that stream of living water which wants to liberate them from within. You haven't been able to make that river flow because the carnality in you hasn't allowed it. Do you hear me, carnal? Do you hear me okay? So John 7, 38 says, Whosoever believes in me, as scripture has said, not like you say, or like you want to do this. No, it is not like this. It is as scripture says, not as the council says, or your denomination says, or as my family says, or as my mother said to me. We came here to this ministry saying things like, oh, I remember that my grandfather used to say to me, I remember my mom taught me this, my dad said this, my grandfather, my family, the council, my country believe in this. But you want me to tell you something? The only thing I believe is what scripture says. My foundation has to be based on the scriptures. Your behavior, your lifestyle, what you say, what you speak, Everything has to be based on scripture. That is why if there's not a running river in your life, it is because you are carnal. Did you hear me, carnal? What does the life manual say? It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Many of us went, but the only thing we didn't do was make disciples. We all went, but... How many of us made disciples? Well, pastor, I went and I told them about Christ and they were saved. Most people saved people, but they never formed them. They never instructed them. How many people did you save? How many people did you form? Not one. So the Great Commission was never effective in your life because it wasn't only about saving people. You have to form them too. Go and make disciples, baptizing them, meaning changing their government, changing who governs them, and pass them on to the government of the kingdom in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of those powers that are sending you and commissioning you to go. That is why today in life, we have been seeing many children, many people with childish behavior. In this apostolic ministry, we are forming people. And the easy thing about this ministry is that up until the person doesn't mature, they aren't prepared to be sent. When do you realize someone is a child or someone is a mature person? You can see it, right? Here, it doesn't matter how long you have been in this ministry. If you don't show me the fruit as it should be, as the word says, then you're a child. No matter how old you are or how long you have been in this ministry, if you walk in carnality, you are a child. The time and the place doesn't make you older or younger. No, your fruits are the ones that distinguish you. It's how much fruit you share in your life. So if you see people who are close to the pastor or are with him a lot, but behave like a child, you're right to think that that person is carnal, is a child. Here, people are valued because of their fruit, not because of their time, their age, or who they're close to. As an apostolic ministry, the Life Manual teaches us that we have to train people. Everyone comes as a child to the gospel, even people who do not know the truth. How are those who live far away from God? How are they? They are like rebellious children, doing crazy things like rebellious children. Believing their life is theirs, they do what they want, they turn, they break, they destroy their lives, their families, their husbands, their wives, their commitments. They destroy everything because they are rebellious children. But there are also children like that in the house. Yes, in this ministry. That's why Apostle Paul confronted the Corinthians 
because of the rebellion of so many young within the same church. I have always said to you, I know when we're going to be ready because you're going to show it to me. I know what continues on in this ministry just by watching you. I even know what I have to preach today, seeing how you behave. If you don't give me the maturity I'm seeking, I'll have to keep giving you milk. You understand? And you can say, wow, I'm so dumb. No, you aren't dumb. You are wicked. Do you think I want to continue giving you milk? I didn't know that your disorder was so great that I had to last so long giving you milk because at the end of the day, you were more childish than what you appeared to be. I really would love to take you where you should be, but your carnality doesn't allow me to. Stop your childish behavior. That's what you have to do. Stop it. At this time, this ministry is entering a dimension where we won't accept childish behavior. We will separate the boys from the men, the girls from the women. We will strip away those little skirts from those who want to continue hiding behind being childish. I want to go on to describe the different types of children we have in the house and their characteristics. And this is going to be very powerful for you to listen so that you can stop your childish behavior. We have two types of children here, the beloved one and the abhorred one. On Genesis 21, 1 through 7 and 12, it mentions that there was a beloved child and we see Isaac was the one. Now, who is a beloved child? One that many of us used to refer to, a phrase was, I'm God's favorite child. How many said that? Well, I have news for you. There is not such a thing as God's favorite child. What there is, is people who allow themselves to be loved, meaning a beloved child. There's no favorite children of God, but children that allow themselves to be loved. I know children in the house who allow themselves to be loved, but I also know those who constantly profess, I'm God's favorite child, I'm God's favorite child. That's just someone seeking to impress, and that's a lie, so you run away. Run from those kind of people, because right there, there's deception, there's pride, there's lies. The truth is that the beloved child allows himself and herself to be loved. How many are understanding me? In this ministry, there are beloved children. But why? Because they allow God's love to embrace them. Haven't you come across people who don't let themselves be loved? And you say to yourself, but wow, I do things right for them and perfectly and this and that. And they're always, look, I'm look, always looking for ways to please that person and nothing works. Why? Because they're not beloved children. This ministry has an identity of the father. This ministry has the behavior of a father. It has the behavior of a father that is always looking for the children, teaching them, looking after them, educating them, healing them and reaching out whenever they are. Well, but when they are not beloved children, they don't know how to discern. They don't know how to interpret what is being done for them. Do you know what they do? They despise that, saying things like, oh my God, these people, they're always after me. Oh, I have to change the study schedule. And we say, okay, let me know. When is it? Let me know what time works for you. But you can never find those children because they are not loved. They don't allow God's love to embrace them. They don't allow themselves to be loved. They are not beloved children. So those are that first type, the beloved children, those who allow the Father to love them. The number one, the number two is the abhorred children. I'm giving characteristics of people who are in our ministry, in the house. I'm not talking about the world because I rarely refer to those in the world. I'm not interested in the world. I'm interested in of those in the house. Everything I speak, I speak for the house. I do not refer myself to the outsiders. So on Genesis 21, 14, we have Ishmael, the abhorred one. But the abhorred ch child is not the one 
that is hated because it's hated. It's because he provokes hate to himself. He does things for others to hate on him. The beloved one is the one who allows himself to be loved. And the abhorred one is the one who allows himself to be hated or provokes to be hated. It's the person who doesn't connect, he doesn't want anything, who doesn't like anything, and makes sure you know he doesn't like everything. These two types of children are what's manifested in the house, and the duty of the ministry of the house is to make them disciples, is to form them. We have a series called Christ Forming Me. You saw how difficult it has been because you yourself have been, has been the one who has violated principles so that Christ is not formed. And if Christ is not forming you, then you're good for nothing. The abhorred one or the hated one, is not hated. It's just that he gives himself to hate. People who are hard to please. And so they provoke that hate because they are abhorred children. They have that DNA. They have that mark that does not allow them to connect to others. They can come around and be around, and yet they don't connect because they are abhorred children. And their behavior says so because they never stop being those children. See why it's been so long and still these kind of children don't change because they are abhorred and those children don't bear fruit, but they are carnal and they live a life of the flesh. That's why it's so easy for this ministry to identify the types of children that we have to work with. Now let's see what are the characteristics or qualities of a child in his spiritual aspect. So, Number one, let's see the characteristics. A, he depends. Number 11, Numbers 11, 12 says, Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? Children are those who depend, who do not know yet how to make decisions because most of the decisions they are, they are making are wrong. That's why you realize that they are children, because all their decisions are always wrong. They are carnal. They have to depend, because they still don't know how to do things correctly. That is the characteristics of a child in his spiritual aspect, so you can describe them easily. B, he is foolish. Someone who is a child is foolish. Proverbs 22:15 says, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Spiritual children are foolish. How is the heart of children? Foolish. And how do you correct the foolish child? With a rod. Apostolically, how do you see I correct children? With a rod. Because spiritual children are foolish, and foolish are corrected with the rod. But pastor, when are you going to stop correcting me? When you stop being a foolish child. How many of you don't want to be corrected? Because of that, you're still foolish. So stop being foolish. A child, see, a child is playful. We are looking at the characteristics of a child. The same as it is on the natural is the same as it is in the spiritual. A child is playful. Zechariah 8.5 says the city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. Children are those who believe that everything is a game. In other words, they don't assume anything in a responsible way. How many people have wanted to assume tasks and missions? How many? And have even told you, yes, I will do it, Pastor. You see, they tell you yes, but they haven't been able to assume. Why not? Because what they're doing is still a game. Because life is a game to them. There's no commitment. And you realize because of the behavior that you're dealing with. Because if they had been mature, they would have assumed. But why can they? Because they still a child, a little girl, a little boy. Do you understand? D, they are fickle. Ephesians 4.14 Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves 
and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Spiritual children are fickle. In other words, they're not constant. They're not persistent. They are fickle. One day they're one way and another day they are another way. They fluctuate. They're not firm. They are carried away by any current. They say things like, well, so-and-so said this to me, so I was thinking, so I believed, I thought, I felt. What is that? A child. A child is not firm. They're always fluctuating. Like it says here, who let themselves be carried away by every wind of doctrine and use human ability. They use hum human ability and they want to apply their deceit with, with trickery because not only are they carried away by the different opinions they hear, but they also end up making mistakes and justifying them because they heard something or someone say something and so they decided based on what they heard. Do you understand? A child is fickle. E, they are ignorant. Hebrews 5.12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Being a child is not bad. What is bad is that you stay a child all your life. You arrived to this ministry as a child, and you drool, you made a mess, we applaud you and cheer you on, and it's fine. But what I won't accept is that if I delegate a responsibility to you, that you act in a childish behavior. There's a consequence to that. Having to be teachers by this time, now we must have the need to teach them again. Gosh! You have to go back to the first things, to the rudiments of the word, and to having milk again, when in reality you should have been getting solid food. And that is shameful. Many will have to start from scratch. And that's shameful. You know why? Because what that means is that you're going to acknowledge how childish you've been. No matter how much you want to cover up, today you have to see for yourself if you're a child or if you're a mature person because this word, the spiritual world doesn't play games with children, and it is not for children. F. Children have poor digestion. Hebrews 5.13 Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. How many spiritual children that are yet receiving milk do I expose to the spiritual world? Who do I expose to the spiritual world? How many here have I sent to wage war in the spiritual world? None. Why don't I do it? Because he who is in milk is not prepared to go and move in the righteousness. That is why it clearly says that everyone who participates in milk is inexperienced in the word of justice because he is a child. But what is the great mess of the children? that they're foolish, that they're playful, that they're fickle, ignorant. And so we have to be very careful when we are feeding a, ch a child because a child cannot be given all kinds of foods. How many did you want not to be given solid foods? When not even milk have been given well yet, then these are the characteristics of a spiritual child. Next, when do we stop being a child? 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When you're a child, how do you speak? Like a child. How do you think? Like a child. We just saw the characteristics, and you realize from those characteristics, where is that childish behavior in your life? Apostolically, I am waiting for the person to mature. But if the only thing I see is a childish behavior, how can you deal with that? Children must always be left in their place until they mature. The Apostle Paul says, or said, when I became a man, what does it mean to become a man? 
I put away the childish, the childhood or childish behavior behind me. Now, how many of you are identifying your inner child? So, when do we stop being children? When we speak correctly. Colossians 4, 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Mature people don't speak like children. Mature people speak correctly. They know how to use the word. They know how to handle grace. They know how to lead. They know how to respond to each of the demands that are presented to them in life. Matthew 5, 37, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. In your mouth is what your heart is. What your mouth talks about, your heart is full of. In your mouth, you say who you are. That is why many know that you're a child, because when you speak, you speak as a child. Ephesians 5, 19, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. We no longer use our mouth as if it was a trash can. No, we have another type of flow of praise, of exaltation. When we speak correctly, we are saying who we are, if you're a child or if you're mature. Did you hear me, child? That is why I make people talk so I can know if you're a spoiled brat or a mature one. If we don't identify the children in this ministry. They make a mess of you. They disgrace this ministry. They disgrace all the missions that prophetically the Lord sends them under the apostolic authority because this is not for children. But when I speak or when you speak, do I see a brat or do I see a mature person? B, when do we stop being children? When we think correctly. 1 Corinthians 14, 20, brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. In regards to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. When altercation comes and the conflict increases, we, mature people, decide to behave in a meek spirit. Like children, we don't get heated and start arguing. So, we stop being children when we think correctly and we no longer think childish. We think like mature people. We don't use this head as a trash can, taking in all that is thrown at. Oh, pastor, so I was thinking, I thought, what do we teach here? Do we want you to think? What do we tell you to do here? The greatest wars you came about and the greatest violence came because you were thinking and you found out 20 years later that your thinking wasn't right. That means 20 years wasted. There are families that have lived through a complete misfortune because someone thought, because someone believed, because someone did, and years later, they found out that that person never really wanted to do what they did and never really wanted to do what they thought. So, we stop being children when we're no longer thinking crazy with those carnal thoughts and with a spirit of suspicion, always looking at things the wrong way. First Philippians 4, 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and un admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I've told you before that I don't think. My mind is not busy thinking about you and what you're doing. I wasn't the one who died on the cross. I'm simply doing what corresponds to me, and I have assumed this calling as such. And so, my mind needs to be alert to the voice of the Spirit, to enjoy listening to the Father, listening to good things, the powerful things of what is the Holy Spirit doing next. Thinking about the things of the kingdom, how to continue to expand, etc., why do you think people have so many heart attacks? It's not because they're busy with a lot at work. No, it's because they have another world they think about inside of them and thinking about so-and-so and all the mess and all the struggles. How many of you have felt the pressure of overthinking? That is why we say here, like the word says, all that is true, 
all that is honest, all that is fair, all that is pure, all that is kind, all that is in good standing. If there's any virtue or anything worthy of praise, this I think. You know how much garbage you've been thinking? You know how much nonsense you've been thinking? It wasn't all that good. It wasn't all pure and fair. All that is kind. All that has virtue. No. In that mind of yours, you had a bit of everything. That is why there are so many children fickle, ignorant, and immature. That is why they don't know how to say the right things, but much less think the right things. They have their minds occupied to recycle garbage. C. When do we stop being children? When we judge correctly. Romans 2.1, you might think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and you should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For who who judge others do these very same things? Apostle Paul wrote, who are you to judge others? Because when you judge another, you condemn yourself. Because who you judge, you do the same as them. Almost always, the one who judges ends up being more miserable than the one who is judged. What does religion do? It judges. What does religion do? It criticizes. It condemns. What do religious folks do? They don't judge themselves. They judge everyone except them. They are paying attention to your growth, but they are seeing that they aren't growing because they're always judging. They criticize everything. You say something and they're adding and subtracting to see if it makes sense to them, but they don't use it for the good of saying, wow, yes, that was great. No, they are just looking to judge. Are there children in this church? Judging, 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 a little gossip here and there. And since you judge another, you condemn yourself. You have spent your entire life disgracing yourself for minding someone else's business. That has gotten you nowhere. Because you have been criticizing your whole life, gossiping and judging, your time has passed by looking at others. Your misfortune, as the word says, you start to see the speck in someone else's eye, but you do not see the beam that is in yours. Look at the beam that you have in your eye, and then we can talk. James 4.12 says, God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? How good is it to judge, huh? Do you know something? When one is apostolically imparting the prophetic dial, one is saying what the manual of life says. I don't come to judge anyone because what I say right here is giving me conviction of sin. The word doesn't negotiate with anyone. The word doesn't come easy on me and harsh on you. No, it is the same treatment for everyone. That same word that I release every day is the same one that I have to live by and that will condemn me. Like the word when it says woe to those who are teachers of the word because they will have a greater condemnation. What does this mean? That when I teach this truth, if I don't live by it and I'm not subjected to it, I have a greater consequence. It would have been better to remain silent and not to be speaking this truth if it was going to become, if it wasn't going to become a lifestyle. When do we know that we're no longer children? When we judge correctly. That is why when a person doesn't have the proper authority and doesn't speak like it corresponds, doesn't think like it corresponds, and doesn't judge like it corresponds, then he is a child. That is why I tell you that from now on, there is a prophetic word for this ministry. Everyone who walks in as a child, I'm telling you now, leave your childish behavior. We do not accept childish behavior from anyone, not in this structure. And yes, if we are going to save many children, we will. But those who have already mature, I'm telling you now, leave your childish self. It's time to grow. And listen to me. I am given this word because the rod is here to discipline. So get ready, children of the house, because our father is coming with the rod, because we don't want any childish behavior anymore. In conclusion, Hebrews 5.11, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have to skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Wow. 
I have had to mix children with mature ones because of the current demand. But today I want to tell everyone that all the children are going to be put aside for now. The mature ones on another side, but I will mix them. I won't be mixing the children with the mature because solid food is for the mature. For those who, by the use, have their senses exercised in the discernment of good and evil. The mature ones know what is good and what is bad. The mature ones know how to exercise discernment. They are not walking in circles. So I'm speaking prophetically and I'm giving an apostolic decree so that you understand what's going to happen from now on. Remember, I don't give special treatment to anybody, not my wife, not my children, not with anyone in this ministry, and you know it. So children, you go on and continue drinking milk, but to those mature ones, you go and have that good solid food that this ministry has for you.